Everyone knows the Empire wasn't exactly fond of non-human species in the Star Wars galaxy. Not only was there an overwhelming culture of xenophobia, especially in the Inner Rim and Core, but humanocentricity was fully codified in the Empire's laws. Aliens were almost universally seen and treated like second-class citizens, even if they did secure positions of power, whether in the government, military, or private sector. As explained by lawyer Noir Aven, there was always the fear of being snatched in the middle of night and taken to an imperial prison, or worse. Not helping the condition of aliens was the generally low level of living conditions that existed throughout much of the galaxy. Slavery, primarily, was very common during the pre- and early Republic eras, but existed throughout known history. Even with the establishment of the galactic-wide government, the Republic, slavery still flourished where central government rule was most tenuous, whether that's the lower levels of course or forgotten worlds on the Outer Rim. Technically, still, slavery was illegal. However, not only could you get away with slavery by doing it away from the authorities, but some other forms of servitude also existed out in the open. For example, the relationship between the Chev and the Chevins, or the Klaatuanians and the Huts. As the Empire took power, slavery was even further decriminalized. Not only did the Empire turn more of a blind eye towards private relationships, but it also specifically legalized the forced servitude of enemies of the Empire, and of course, that could fit basically anyone. Slaves were used for countless Imperial projects, including the construction of the Death Stars, among many, many other examples. Back to the Empire though in just a moment. When the New Republic and later Galactic Alliance took power, they did attempt to eliminate the practice of private slavery throughout the galaxy while formally abolishing the use of slaves on behalf of the government. However, slavery was so widespread and common that it was almost impossible to root out, and depending on the political leader of the time, there wasn't even necessarily the will to do so. Actively taking a stand against slavery threatened to both weaken governments and economies that relied on slave labor, also potentially causing massive revolts which could destabilize the Outer Rim. I promise we're getting to the point here. The dynamics of this conflict are covered extensively in Fate of the Jedi, which features Freedom Flight, an organization with the stated goal of ending slavery. One of the species Freedom Flight targeted for liberation was the Octusi. The example of Octusi slavery is very, very complicated. The Octusi are described as semi-sentient in Fate of the Jedi. In Star Wars, sentience basically means the ability to think like a human. In the real world, we'd probably refer to them as maybe semi-sapient. The wording, however, is not important. The Octusi had the intelligence of basically human children. They can clearly feel and think, but are not very sophisticated. As Saba Sabatine explains, the Octusi speak and understand nearly a hundred words, but they do not read or write, and they have no concept of time beyond now, later, and before. They use simple hand tools to dig and shape stone, but do not understand levers or pulleys. So, the Octusi have a relationship with another species of the Bladu system, the Blaudons, one that is very, very close, if not definitely slavery. The Octusi are from Bladu Octus, which is a pretty inhospitable world, and one where the Octusi do not tend to live very long. Many, however, are taken to the mining colony of Bladu Sextus by the Blaudons, where they perform hard labor. The Blaudons have full control over the lives of their workers, they can treat them like property if they choose to do so, but on the other hand, generally treat the Octusi like pets, and I mean that in a positive sense. Now, what makes this complicated, and I say that because having control over a person's life, even if you do treat them well, is definitely slavery, is the fact that the Blaudons willingly enter the relationship, because as I mentioned, their world is fairly inhospitable. They live much longer while working for the Blaudons. Octusi generally return to their home planet and get new members to leave, and if they so choose to, are even able to return to Blaudu Octus at the end of their lives. They work hard, but seem to enjoy what they do. So it's a complicated relationship where both species are receiving something from the other, the Octusi willingly serve the Blaudons, they are treated well, and they have a better chance for a good, long life than they would on their own, but they're also not paid and basically forced service. Servants. So, when the Jedi learn of this situation and are trying to figure out what they should do, they discuss how the New Republic, Empire, and Galactic Alliance would have treated the Octusi, and this is where we get some interesting insight into 
into how the Empire worked on an intimate level. By the standards of the Old Republic, the Octusi would be classified as a primitive species and protected by the same laws that protect children and the mentally disabled. By Imperial standards, they would be classified as advanced livestock and treated as chattel. Chattel in this situation meaning essentially property. So under the Empire, because the species is less intelligent, they are totally free to be exploited. A group of humans would be free to land on Bladu Octus, grab as many Octusi as they want force them to breed, then just toss them in a big pit, if that's what they wanted to do. This is of course a much more extreme version of slavery than the Octusi's relationship with the Blodons, which was at least quasi-voluntary. I think it's obvious why it's so troublesome that the Empire can just take a species that can clearly feel everything from fear to love, which can think and feel pain, and just declare open season on them. And later in Fate of the Jedi, a bunch of Octusi are slaughtered by Mandalorian Mandalorians, and it's really just terrible. Under the Empire, this would be absolutely and totally allowed. The Octusi themselves are also pacifists, they're very gentle, and are even described as beautiful. But I think even more troublesome is the fact that the Empire surely has the final say on whether a species meets the necessary level of sophistication to be considered a primitive species. And remember, this is a galaxy which really values humans above all else. So maybe the local moth doesn't like the Mon Calamari. It would be very, very easy for them to be described as a lesser or primitive species. And I mean, once that decision is made, how are you going to challenge that in any meaningful way? And just a reminder, the Octusi aren't dogs or cows or even gorillas. They're more intelligent than that. They have a form of society. They have rituals. They are able to feel, communicate, and make decisions. Again, like children. Many sophisticated countries on Earth have outlawed the cruel and inhumane treatment of pets, and certainly more intelligent animals like non-human primates or whales. So I think the fact that the Empire allows free reign over the Octusi just tells us how disturbing and twisted the government really was. However, that is just my opinion. What do you think of the relationship between the Blaudons and the Octusi? Should the Jedi actively get involved in ending slavery? Should the government? Let me know what you think about all of that and more down in the comments section. I'm especially curious to hear the thoughts of those who read Fate of the Jedi about this plotline. Anyway guys, that is all for today. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you.